If you're looking for that perfect blend of power and portability in a gaming laptop, then you've probably come across Asus's Zephyrus G14, a popular option, and for good reason. But hold on, this year's version shakes things up. Asus have waved goodbye to AMD's Radeon graphics and rolled out the red carpet for Nvidia's GeForce RTX 40 series. But what sort of a difference does this make, and what else has changed? This detailed review will show you and help you decide if this year's G14 is worth buying. I've got the darker Eclipse Grey finish here, but it's also available in Moonlight White. Just like last year, the G14's build quality feels excellent. There's only a little flex to the keyboard, but that's due to the lift up design. The back of the laptop lifts up when you open the lid, improving cooling by allowing more air underneath, as well as giving you a better angle for typing. The only downside is beyond a certain point, the back of the laptop is held up by small rubber feet out towards the corners. These just aren't as grippy compared to the bigger rubber foot at the back. There's a groove along the whole front of the lid, making one finger opening easy, and it goes the full way back for sharing. There's a regular amount of flex to the aluminum lid, but the hinges feel sturdy even when ripping the lid open fast. The lid has 14,969 CNC milled holes. Nice. I've got the optional animated lid, which also has 1,440 49 LEDs built in. You can customize what shows on the lid through software, from random animations or text to email notifications, the current time, or even how much battery you've got left. It's very portable, which is kind of the main point behind a 14 inch gaming laptop, but it is a little thicker if you get it with the animated lid. The laptop alone weighs 3.7 pounds or 1.7 kilos, increasing to 5.4 pounds or 2.5 kilos with the 240 watt charge are included. So again, noticeably more portable compared to most 15 inch models I review. My G14 has AMD's Zen 4 Ryzen 9 7940 HS processor, Nvidia RTX 4060 graphics, 16 gigs of RAM and a 14 inch 165Hz screen. There are quite a few different configurations though, ranging from RTX 3050, 4050, 4060, 4070, 4080 and even 4090. Basically everything. Check the link below the video to see all the options. The lower spec configs have the Ryzen 7 7735HS CPU, which uses last year's Zen 3 Plus architecture, so it's basically a rebranded 6800H from last year, but likely cheaper too. My keyboard only has white backlighting, but there's also a single zone of RGB option too. All keys and secondary functions get lit up, and there are three brightness levels which can be adjusted with the F2 and F3 shortcuts. The Aura key on F4 can be used to swap through the built-in effects, but without RGB, there are only three basic options. The ASUS Armory Crate software, the control panel for the laptop, has way more options that only apply to the RGB model, which might be a bit confusing as many don't work on the white only one. I liked typing on the keyboard. The presses felt nice and clicky. The touchpad feels smooth and works very well. It just felt super accurate to use. As for ports, the left side has the power input, HDMI 2.1 output, USB 4 Type-C port, and a 3.5mm audio combo jack. The right has a UHS-2 micro SD card slot, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports. It's too thin to fit Ethernet, and only the Type-C port on the left can charge the laptop with up to 100 watts. Both Type-C ports do have DisplayPort 1.4 support though, so you can connect a screen to either. But the one on the left connects to the integrated Radeon graphics, whether Optimus is on or off. The right Type-C port and HDMI always connect directly to the Nvidia graphics though, and we confirmed that HDMI could run our LG B9 TV at 4K 120Hz 12-bit with G-Sync. There are 11 Phillips head screws to unscrew to get inside. The four down the front are shorter than the rest, and the front right one doesn't come out of the panel. It lifts it up, making it easy enough to open without tools. For some reason, three of the screws are covered by rubber, so you'll need to pry that out first. 
Once inside, we've got the battery down the front, single memory slot just above on the right, single PCIe Gen 4 M.2 SSD slot, and the Wi-Fi 6 E card hidden away underneath that. The Wi-Fi speed was surprisingly decent for a MediaTek card. Lower tier models are usually much lower on this graph, but the 2023 G14 is right up there with the Legion 7, and a fair bit higher compared to last year's G14 with the same Wi-Fi card. The read speeds from the SD card slot were excellent. Excellent. Writes weren't as good, but I think that matters far less as it's designed for dumping content. The card clicks in and sits the full way into the machine, so fingernails will help with getting it in and out. The speeds from the installed 512GB SSD were decent, but we constantly found ourselves running out of space during testing. I think 1TB should be the minimum these days, but ASUS only offer that with higher tier configurations. You can of course upgrade it yourself. But as there's only one M.2 slot, you'll either have to clone the drive or reinstall Windows. Although there's only room for one M.2 drive, it can at least fit double-sided drives. Though it was much easier if you remove the installed thermal pad. The upgradability score was the same as previous G14s. We can change the single SSD, Wi-Fi card, and one RAM slot. Other 14-inch laptops this year, like MSI's Stealth 14 and Razer's Blade 14, now have two SODEM slots, so the G14 sticking to one isn't as good in terms of upgradability. My config has 16 gigs of memory soldered which cannot be changed, but there are also lower spec versions that are limited to 8 gigs. Installing a stick of memory can give you a performance boost, but it's not that serious in most games. We can see here there's only a 6% FPS boost in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, and I have found this to be a memory sensitive game. The native 25 by 1600 resolution is so GPU bound that there's no difference. Long story short, with DDR5 memory, one stick kind of already runs in dual channel, while two sticks runs in quad channel. This is a bit different compared to older DDR4, where one memory stick would run in single channel and could significantly hurt performance. But I've already compared this in depth on last year's G14 in a separate video. There's a much bigger difference if we're talking about integrated graphics performance. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was reaching double the frame rate with the memory stick installed when running the game on the Radeon 780M iGPU. But interestingly, it was only 1 FPS faster compared to last year's G14 with 680M. There are front facing tweeters above the keyboard and woofers underneath. It didn't sound quite as good to me compared to last year's G14. The newer 2023 model sounded a bit muffled at higher volume levels and there was a fair bit of wristrest vibration. Regardless, it still sounds decent and above average compared to most other laptops. Speaking of sounds, by default it plays this one on boot. Fortunately, you can disable it through the software or BIOS. The latency mon results weren't amazing, but not as bad compared to other recent laptops tested. The G14 is powered by a 4-cell 76 watt hour battery. We can enable battery care mode through the Myasu software, which is separate to Armory Crate, and this limits the charge level to 80% to help improve the battery's lifespan. Panel power saver is enabled by default, which automatically lowers the screen's refresh rate to 60 hertz when you unplug the charger to save power. This is why the screen flashes black, and it goes back to 165Hz when you plug back in. I've tested running a game at 30fps on both the integrated and discrete graphics, and just like last year, it didn't last as long when using the iGPU. So although it's capable of lightweight gaming, I don't see the point. The battery lasted a little over 8.5 hours in the YouTube video playback test, a great result compared to most other laptops due to the AMD the Ryzen processor. However, the older G14s were able to run for longer. It's only a little ahead of last year's Razer Blade 14, but that had a smaller battery. I'll be reviewing the newer 2023 model very soon. Make sure you're subscribed. Let's check out thermals next. It's got a vapor chamber cooler covering the CPU and GPU, and there's thermal grizzly liquid metal on the CPU, but not the GPU. That has paste. Last year's model had liquid metal on both, but it also had AMD graphics. 
perhaps an Nvidia GPU has less to gain. There are holes directly above the air intake fans with some dust filters. Air gets exhausted out of the left and right sides and out the back, though due to the lift up design this results in hot air blowing against the screen, in spite of the angled vents we see here. I doubt that's a problem though, as they've had this design since 2020 and I haven't heard of widespread problems. ASUS's Armory Crate software allows us to change between different performance modes, which from lowest to highest are silent, performance, turbo and manual. Both turbo and manual modes apply this overclock to the GPU, but only manual mode lets you customise it. You can change the fan curve of both fans separately, change the CPU power limit, set a lower thermal throttle limit for the GPU, or reduce the dynamic boost power limit range. Whenever we've tested manual mode, all sliders were maxed out with fans on 100% speed. The internal temperatures were a little warm at idle, but it's not a problem. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU stress tests, which aim to represent a worst case full load scenario. Manual and turbo modes were about the same, and closing the lid resulted in the laptop running a fair bit warmer. You'll see why soon. The cooling pad I test with, linked below the video, was able to lower temps quite a bit. These are the clock speeds in the same tests. CPU clock speeds were highest with the lid closed for some reason, which is why the temperatures rose so much. The GPU clock speed suffers, because Nvidia's 87 degree Celsius thermal throttle limit was hit when docked. CPU performance increased with the cooling pad compared to not using it, despite the fact that thermal throttling wasn't happening without it. The RTX 4060 was able to run up to 106 watts with the CPU loaded up at the same time, which is a good result. The spec sheet and Nvidia control panel say it can boost up to 125 watts with dynamic boost, but that's not seen in this workload due to Nvidia's voltage limit. We can see that CPU TDP increases with the lid closed. I'm not really sure why. For some reason when you close the G14's lid, it decides it's going to start working harder, which results in higher temps. There wasn't really a performance difference between turbo and manual modes. The difference is within the margin of error range, but manual mode allows tuning. The CPU power level can run much higher when the GPU isn't active, like in Cinebench, where manual mode was maxing out around 80 watts. Again, manual and turbo modes were quite similar, while performance and silent modes were also much the same. It might not look amazing compared to some of Intel's higher core count options, but this is now the fastest 8-core laptop result we've ever recorded in both single and multi-core score. I mean, the fact that it's close to the 16-core 24-thread chip in the larger Omen Transcend 16 just above it is impressive. And it's 15% faster in single-core compared to last year's G14 and 29% faster in multi-core. This is a decent general gen improvement, as we've moved from Zen 3 Plus to Zen 4. The gap between the 2022 and 2021 G14s is much smaller, as there was less difference between Zen 3 and Zen 3 Plus. Don't forget that this year's G14 has a Ryzen 7 7735HS option, which is Zen 3 Plus, so it won't be too different compared to last year's model with the same architecture. Performance lowers if we unplug the charger and instead run purely off of battery power. The single core performance didn't change much, but the multi-core suffers so much that it's basically now in line with last year's G14. Still though, it's not too bad compared to a number of Intel options that have way more cores and threads. Most laptops I test are in the low 30 degree Celsius range on the keyboard at idle, but the G14 was quite a bit warmer than this. Not uncomfortable, just pretty warm. It's much warmer with the stress test going in silent mode. WASD wasn't uncomfortable, but the middle was, and the extra buttons on the top left were on fire. Performance mode is a little better, but the fans are louder too, and it's still quite warm in the middle. Turbo mode wasn't that much different. Resting on WASD while playing a game is okay, but the middle is warmer than I'd like. Manual mode with the fans maxed out wasn't much different than turbo. We saw earlier the performance between these modes was basically the same, and there's no difference between the fan noise either. Let's have a listen.
I couldn't hear the fans at all when just idling in silent mode, but they turned on and were quiet once I started using it. There wasn't much difference between performance, turbo, and manual mode with the fans maxed out though, but it wasn't quite as loud compared to most other laptops, which are often closer to 55 decibels. It's still got a 14 inch 16x10 screen, just like last year, which I really like because when you're sitting in front of it, it kind of looks like you're just looking at screen only. There's also a new 600 nit 165Hz mini LED screen option this year. Unfortunately we don't have that, but ours still has a 500 nit 165Hz screen that looks good with excellent colours. The brightness didn't quite get to the advertised 500 nits at 100%, but this can vary a bit depending on the panel lottery. Backlight bleed was fine here. I never noticed the minor patches during normal use, but again this will vary between laptops. Overdrive is enabled in Armory Crate by default, which gives a faster response time. We're looking at an average greater gray response time of 4.35 milliseconds with it on, and all transitions were below the 6.06 milliseconds needed to occur within the 165Hz refresh window. There was some overshoot and undershoot. This can be removed by turning Overdrive off, but the response time in increases to almost 7 milliseconds. It's a good result compared to other laptops, and a little faster compared to last year's G14 with a 120Hz screen, both of which are quite a bit faster compared to the even older 2021 model. The total system latency is the amount of time between a mouse click and when a gunshot fire appears on the screen in CSGO. Again, it's just a little faster compared to last year's G14, but a fair bit better compared to the 2021 model. There's a 1080 p camera above the screen, up from last year's 720p, and it has IR for Windows Hello Face Unlock. Here's how the camera and microphones look and sound, and this is what it sounds like while typing on the keyboard. Advanced Optimus lets you disable Optimus without rebooting, but you can set the GPU mode to Ultimate, which is the traditional MUX switch option and requires a reboot. Leave it on Standard mode if you're going to use Advanced Optimus through the NVIDIA control panel. Eco mode disables the NVIDIA graphics and only uses the integrated graphics to improve battery life. Optimized mode sounds like it's advanced Optimus on auto, but I didn't actually find it to work. Loading a GPU workload still used the iGPU and dGPU. The screen has G-Sync when Optimus is off, but that's only controlled through the NVIDIA control panel. Now let's find out how well this year's G14 actually performs in games. We've tested it with these settings, but only used stock memory, so the 16 gigs of soldered memory without an extra stick installed. But as we saw at this timestamp, adding the extra stick doesn't really change game FPS that much. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested the same on all laptops, and the G14 is shown by the red highlight. It's a little behind the other high-powered RTX 4060 laptops tested so far, but it is also the smallest one, so that's not too surprising. This continues at the higher 1440p resolution too, but I mean MSI's much larger 17-inch Vector GP77 was only 2 FPS better. The best 4060 result was 11% faster though, but again, that laptop is bigger too, even if it's also cheaper. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. This game tends to do better with AMD's Radeon graphics, which is why last year's older G14 was actually slightly ahead. Still though, the newer G14 was at least now ahead of some other bigger 4060 laptops. The older G14 maintains its lead at the higher 1440p resolution, but it's 42% faster compared to the 2021 G14 with RTX 3060 graphics. But that also goes on sale these days for like $800. Check the link below the video to see current sales. Control on the other hand does better with Nvidia's GeForce graphics, which is why the newer G14 now had a larger 40% lead compared to last year's version with the Radeon 6800S graphics. So just goes to show it can depend on the game. At 1440p, it's in line with other larger 4060 laptops, but not too far ahead compared
compared to cheaper 3060 laptops from last year. Here are the 3D mock results for those that find them useful. And now for some content creator tests. Adobe Photoshop was tested with the Puget Systems benchmark tool. I've tested both at stock and with a stick of memory installed, as I've found this to affect creator workloads way more than games. Without the extra RAM, last year's G14 was faster, as that came with a stick installed. Adding the RAM gets us a 35% higher score. The Adobe Premiere test recently changed, so we're still building up our data, but we can see adding the stick of memory gets us a 15% higher score. GPU power matters more in DaVinci Resolve, and the extra memory only gave us a 4% boost here. Interestingly, the G14's 4060 was able to score higher compared to the 4070 in two other slimmer laptops just below it. Blender doesn't seem to care about GPU power much, because all the 4060 results were very close together, and even the 4070 doesn't get you that much extra here. We've also tested SpecView Perf, which tests out various professional 3D workloads. The BIOS looks nice, but there's nowhere near as much customization available compared to MSI or Lenovo laptops, but maybe a little more option compared to others like Aorus and Razer. Linux support was tested with an Ubuntu 23.04 Live CD. By default, the keyboard, touchpad, camera, and Wi-Fi worked, but the speakers did not. There was sound, but it was barely audible, probably through an internal speaker. No other speakers were detected. Keyboard shortcuts for screen and keyboard brightness work, but you can't change lighting effects. Pricing and availability will change over time, so check the link below the video for updates and current sales. And if this laptop does go on sale, we'll be sure to add it to our gaming laptop Deals website. We update that every day to include all of the latest sales, so make sure you check it out regularly to save money on your next gaming laptop. At the time of recording, Best Buy have the RTX 4050 model on sale for $1,280, and we've actually got that listed on the deal site. And we can see there that last year's models are also on sale for less, and will probably end up outperforming it. The 4060 config we're looking at in this video goes for $1,600, while the higher tier 4080 is quite a step up at $2,500, and then the 4090 is even higher at $3,300. They don't seem to have the 4070 at the moment. All things considered, I think that the Asus Sephiroth G14 is a great portable gaming laptop. The price is definitely on the higher side compared to other laptops with similar specs, but that's always going to be the case with higher performing 14 inch models. You just have to pay more to get good performance in a smaller size, it's how tech works. The main thing that I didn't like was just how hot the keyboard could get in the middle when running a heavy workload. It's like 10 degree Celsius warmer compared to last year's model. But last year's model also had liquid metal on the CPU and GPU, while this year only has it on the CPU, so maybe that's a factor. Oh, and the fans on last year's model actually get slightly louder than this one too. This year's version also has the mini LED screen option, as well as faster CPU and GPUs. But apart from that extra performance, which is always welcome, there aren't a whole lot of big changes with this year's G14. Don't fix what's not broken, I get it. But Considering that other 14 inch gaming laptops this year, like MSI's Stealth 14 and Razer's Blade 14, have both evolved to having two memory slots, it would have been nice to see the G14 make that move too, as more upgradability is always better. This is the first 14 inch gaming laptop that we've reviewed in 2023 so far, so it's a little difficult to compare it to those other models right now. But we did just get both the Blade 14 and Stealth 14 in for testing, so make sure you're subscribed for those reviews. Use. And if you've come this far and are considering the G14, then check out this video next. I compared 10 games and a bunch of other apps with and without a stick of memory installed in last year's G14 to find out how much difference it makes. So check that out next to find out if it's worth spending the money to upgrade your G14.